first of all, thanks so much for taking time out your busy schedule to visit us. Not at all. Um, could you first please just describe to us quickly what your presidential role entails? Um, it's quite a large role. So it's the, um, probably first of all, it's the figurehead for, for all students. So I'd be chief spokesman, um, you know, if the media or anything want to Dundee's student view on things like that, they'll get in touch with me. Um, I'm also the chief representative of students to, to the university, so things like the governing body court and senate and things like that and committees. Then also it's um, making sure that the, the union is, is delivering for its members, um, both pastoral representation and the commercial side. And then um, probably the third main tenant of it would be leading the team, leading the exec team, helping them achieve their, their objectives, both individual objectives and what we set out in our manifesto. Uh, could you give us a quick recap of the policies that got you elected? Yeah, um, first one was I wanted to deliver more student-led campaigns. Um, I wanted to, uh, second of all, I wanted to increase the communication between the exec, perhaps more generally DISA and the student body. And then third of all, it was to sort of provide the continuity um, from one year to the next. Okay, so for your delivering more student-led campaigns, uh, like, what, what's, I don't really know of anything that's really happened with yeah. that. I'm not saying that there isn't. I mean, maybe I've just not been made aware of it, but if you there's just going to go into it a bit more. Yeah, there, there's been some um, certainly led, you know, and spearheaded by our societies. Um, but what I wanted to do was to try and take it more in-house and have DISA have a more active role in these sort of things. Um, so, like, during my first year, we restructured the exec, so we amalgamated the communications and campaigns role. The BPCC rule, um, and you know that that was designed so DISA could deliver more political campaigns, things that affect us on a wider basis. But essentially, there hasn't been anything um, on the scale of what I would have hoped. Um, there has been certain things, and we've got a really exciting one coming up as part of the university's five million questions project, sort of relating to the independence referendum. So, um, sort of under the five million questions banner, we're going to be organising a. Um, sort of um, an education, higher education debate. Um, we're hoping to have some, you know, quite influential individuals. Don't in the end just yet in case they all pull out, but we're, that's sort of been spearheaded by myself and Dan. Um, let's try and sort of educate students about the referendum, you know, just as maintaining a neutral stance on it, but just to let, let students know it's coming up, let them think about, well, what does it mean for my degree, my education, if Scotland goes independent, things like that. Okay, that's cool. Um, what about, okay, your policy to increase communication between the student exec and the students. Mm -hmm. uh, the profile, the Facebook profile, was taken down, and the blog hasn't really had many posts on it yeah. since November. So, do you feel like you've successfully implemented that policy? I think I've implemented it. Um, I think we all have because I think pretty much every every single person last year ran on improving communication one way or the other. Um, the blog has been used. Um, I think it's a successful idea. Um, um, I think that you mentioned the Facebook profile. We got rid of the exact Facebook because it had 81 likes compared to whatever, 11 or 12,000 on the main. So rather than trying to put out either competing messages, I you know, talked it over with the exec and our marketing team. We thought it was better just to have one DISA site that instead of people constantly being bombarded by um, our commercial arm on the Facebook site, they can get a mixture of both. And it was better for the exec to have that avenue into to more people. Um, blog's a good tool, I think it just needs refined. But the whole idea of communication between um, exec and student bodies with, you know, just the bodies with the students, um, that's not just an issue for us. I think that's pretty much every student union up and down the country when I speak to, to different presidents and members of other execs, you know. It's just this big bugbear by trying to put out your message in an interesting way that let your students kind of know what you're, you're doing day to day, but then also want to be interested in what you're doing. Yeah. Have you got any other plans for the rest of the year, just for that policy in particular? Um, I think what we're going to look at doing is, so we, we produced a manifesto at the start of the year, which was our, you know, the, the entire executive, what we wanted to do as, as a team. So um, to improve in our communication, we're going to have sort of a, a publication that says, this is what we set out to do and this is what we've done. And we're, we want to prim probably put that out before the Easter break so people can see what we've done up, up to that point. And still there's a little bit of time after because we, we don't leave off till June. So that's probably my next big, you know, uh, aim within communication. Okay, that's good. Um, 
What about provide continuity to la create lasting change? Could you go into it a bit more? Because I don't I, like it. I mean, obviously, it's, it's a bit. I don't really get what it yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> It was probably deliberately ambiguous because I explained it a bit more in the statement. So also, you, you know, you're going to get a certain few lines in, mm -hmm. on your poster, and you've got to try and convey your, your ideas. Um, but so I went into it a bit more, kind of in the in the personal statement on the back of the leaflets. But also, it was a good thing to try and explain to people when I was running. Essentially, what it means is um, I wanted a second term because what I quickly found out during my first term is the university is like an oil tanker. It takes an awful long time for it to turn around and get anything done. Um, so you can get things done quite quickly in DUSA, but when you start to go through the university committee structure and you're trying to you know, get allies for policies and things like that to get change, uh, it took a long time. So the idea of continuity was to get things finished, but then also because I knew the people, I'd worked with them for a year, hopefully things could be sped up and it looks like that was the case. Yeah, that's good. So it's your second year in office. Do you think you've definitely improved on your first year? Um, yeah, I would say so. It's just you know, the fact that it is the second year, you know, um, you know, in the first year you're, you're new to it, you're going to make mistakes. Um, I think I learned from certain mistakes last year um, with how to, you know, handle different things both inside this and with the university. So yeah, I'd say this year is an improvement, um, but that's not to write off my first year, hopefully. That's, <laughs> you, 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 you can make that decision and I can How's disagree with you. How is it an improvement? Sorry, if I can... Uh, Sorry? How is it an improvement? I think just because this year that um, because I know I've got the experience of last year and I know the people, you know, the right people to speak to, therefore things move quicker. Whereas, you know, um, when you're new to something, you have an idea, but you don't necessarily know the right person to go to to help refine it or shape it or to help you with it. So that's why I think it's improvement. I've been able to get more things done at university level because I've been able to, to know the people to speak with and get things done. Okay, that's good. Um can you give us a brief account of what you see as your biggest personal achievements this year? Um, I think that I would probably say that there are two achievements I'm, I'm, I'm proud of, and I kind of say that hesitantly because one's still sort of in the mix. But very quickly, I, I identified that this is quite poorly funded by the university compared to other unions. Um, so we've set ourselves the ambitious goal of being the best student union in the UK by 2016. Um, but the unions that are ahead of us at the minute are, um, are funded to the tune of millions by their institutions, whereas ours is about half a million. So I started putting together the case for why the university should invest more money in us. And you know those negotiations are still going on, but it's quite positive. Um, so that's one. And then secondly, I would say sort of the whole process of trying to professionalize what the, the exec does, what DUSA does, have that sort of sense of ambition to be number one. So I started that in the first year, it's carried through into the second year. Um, I'd say right across the organisation, people are bought into that, that we need to be professional, we need to understand that you know what we do as an organisation and where we need to improve. Um, so those are the two things, because trying to pull that all together okay. was ambitious. So obviously you're not perfect. What was your biggest failure this I'm not year? not perfect, that's news. Um, biggest feeling this year? Um, I think that... I don't know if it's a failing, but it's certainly something I, I think there needs to be a lot more work put into, and it is that communication issue. Um, I would probably, obviously, sort of, because I lead the team, if, if it hasn't worked, well then, yeah, it's, it's my responsibility. Um, I think we really need to put in a lot of, lot of time and effort trying to understand, well, what are we doing wrong? Uh, what aren't we doing? What have we tried in the past? Um, you know, I think that and it's good to see that the candidates this year, a lot of them are running on this idea, but they're going to have to bring something new to the table. You know, we can't just rehash things that we've tried over the last couple of years. So that would be a feeling, but like I say, that's an issue up and down the country. Yeah. Why do you think that is, that it's so unsuccessful that you just can't seem to reach out? Well, maybe I'm just putting words in your mouth. No, 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 no. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, I think that, um, like I say, it's, it's a complicated issue, and I don't think it's specific to, to Dundee. I think there's there's things that the exec need to do. We need to put out our message in a, perhaps a more interesting way, or a, you know, a more easily digestible way. You know, is, is a, a written manifesto the right way to go? Should we have more public meetings or something like that? You know, like I say, I've I've looked into this issue um, actually a lot in the summertime and spoke to other presidents and other unions, and they all had different ways of answering the question. A lot of which we had tried. So, um, like I said, I don't think it's, it's specific to Dundee. 
Um, what are you planning on doing for the rest of your year? What can we expect from our president? Uh, well, there's a couple of things I want to finish through. Obviously, I want to secure that additional funding from the university. That's going to let us hire, hopefully, uh, new roles within DISA to support the exec, to support our communication our, and our methods. That's, that's a big aim of mine. Um, apart from that, then, I'll just be uh, continuing to represent the students. You know, um, the elections are in March, but I don't leave until June, so there'll be plenty of issues between now and then that DISA will have to respond to. We'll have to lobby the university for, lobby the government for. Um, so those are, those are the big things. Okay. What have you learned while being in this position? Um, that things don't happen as quickly as you would like. Um, it's not a flippant answer. You know, I, I think you, know, you come into this job and, or any of these sabbatical positions and you have ideas and you want them to happen and you don't understand why people opposite the table from you don't understand it's a priority. So, First of all, you've got to learn that you need to convince those people, and then you've got to take that message further. You've got to prove your case, and then you've got to keep working at it. Um, so I'd say patience and things don't happen as quickly as you want, but if you persevere, you might get somewhere. Okay, and if you could give one piece of advice to the next president, what would it be? <laughs> Only one piece of advice? I'm going to give a lot more to whoever takes over from me. Um, work as a team. I think that's really important. I think if you try to split it up into, you know, either having, you know, the four sabbaticals working on diff little different things without talking to each other, or the entire seven-member team working on different things without talking, um, you know, you're, you're splitting up and you're dividing a lot of energy. So I'd say work as a team. Make sure you, you talk to one another and you know what your big objectives are for the year. That's good. What are you What are you going to do after this? What are your plans for the future? I don't. I'm not too sure at the minute. Um, I've, I've sort of, I'm looking to, I would like to stay in HE, higher education. Um, I, I particularly enjoy some of the things that I get the opportunity to sit on, some of the committees and things like that, um, through the role of being president. So hopefully something like, say, higher education, looking at, you know, learning and teaching and um, things to do with widening access would be um, my ideal job, but they're thin on the ground. So I'll just be happy for a job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're You've seen the video now. What I have indeed. Um, yeah, there was obviously it wasn't as as good as I would have liked. I would have liked more people to be able to uh, identify members of the exec and tell us what they did. But it just shows that there's still a big job to be done. Yeah, and how do you think the current and future exec could increase the exec's profile? Well, sort of as I said, you know, we we've we've tried a, a couple of different things over the last couple of years, and I don't think that we've found that magic bullet yet. Um, I wouldn't want to say what next year's exec should do. Um, I would probably advise them to try something new. If they've got ideas, to run with it. Um, but I think that, you know, the one thing I would say is they could probably make more use of, of the blog. You know, it was something I thought was a good idea, we just haven't used it enough this year. I think that's a fair criticism. Um, and so hopefully they'll have a, a new approach, a unique approach that'll fix it. Thank you. Maggie, do you have any other questions? Just have one more question. And as far as what, what have they tried in the past for those viewers that are not aware? Uh, well, one thing that sort of really springs to mind is um, with Chris Brown's year, when he was acting president, they tried a thing called Exec on the Road. So the exec would, you know, for two hours, and I think it was on a Thursday, um, you know, they would set up sort of a, like an open office almost, a desk and a laptop, and they would do it in the DOJ, in the Dalhousie building, in the Tower building. Um, you know, that idea of getting out of uh, their offices, seen by students, and, you know, I think they had maybe one or two people come up to them and it was mainly to ask who they are, what they were selling. Um, once they explained it was the DIS exec, they kind of lost interest and moved on. So, you know, these kind of road shows or public surgeries, uh, if, you know, because we've tried that with the SRC, it's a nice idea, but it's just been found not to work. So, you know, I would advise not to go back to field things, to look at a new approach or look at something that's working a little bit and try to make that better. Blog, an example. Okay. Thank you.